I just saw you were logging out, so I thought I'd stop by and give you something. A little welcome gift. We give awards to our top-notch employees for doing quality work. And they're nice to have, since there's no official bonus scheme here. I already have about 11 or so. Oh. Bonjour. Of course. I'll pass it on. Well, looks like Olivier wants to meet with you. It's exciting. Follow me. It's on the top floor, so it's not hard to find. But the rest of this building can be confusing to first-timers, so... We had the tools team whip up a great map application. Check your communicator. I added a waypoint to Olivier's office. Should be easy to find. The, where's the waypoint on the map? I just see nothing at the moment apart from you. Olivier's a nice guy. He won't bite. There's also a guy that's going to disappear into the Watchdogs universe shortly. CCO office. Hello? Hi? Testing, testing. Is this thing working? <coughs> this is John from IT. We met earlier. I, I was calibrating your animus. I'm sort of the uh, Scotty of this Abstergo enterprise. In charge of all the techie stuff. Do you have a minute? Oh, ah, oh. oh, damn it. The tracker says you're on your way to Olivier's office. Ah, all right. I'll ping you when you're done. I have a favor to ask. Oh. <laughs> Imagine just standing in the elevator looking the wrong Go fucking right. way. He's waiting for you. Yeah, let's see if there's anything to collect around here. Don't mind me. Just having a little nose. Oh, I didn't even get to read that, asshole. Takes you down there. Nice. Okay. Ooh. Sometimes there's collectibles in toilets. Bad enough games to know that, but not in this one. Right, okay, uh Yeah. Go to his office. Is something wrong? No, it's just like a huge shit. Don't mind me. Well, unless you are specifically ordering me to abandon it, I won't uh, jeopardize our flagship project. Edward Kenway is the... But this is... But this is how Hollywood got its start, right? With pirate movies. Douglas Fairbanks, Errol Flynn, and now we have access to the real deal. <sighs> wait, wait. Exactly. We'll talk about all that together at the shareholders' event. Right. Looking forward to seeing you too. Take care, Letizia. Salut! Hi! Thanks for coming in. I know you're busy. So, I reviewed some of your data. Pretty raw stuff. Obviously, we need to scrub off some of the dirt to make it family-friendly. Maybe give Edward a voice like uh, James Bond or something. More of a ladies' man. A beautiful city, no? So the main reason I asked you here concerns is something called the Observatory. It's uh, been mentioned a few times in the footage you found. I'd like to encourage you to focus on locating this specific set of memories as soon as possible. If it were up to me, on s'en I wouldn't bother. But some big wigs at Abstergo Industries have been hounding me for days. So, follow whatever leads you find, and hopefully we can... Oh, incoming call. I have to take this. We'll keep in touch. Bonne journée. Alan, bonjour. Reach your workstation. I will once I get this little treat that's lying here. I'm sticking out, but I can't really do much with that, because... It's like number 19. Hi, John from IT again. You got a second? Good. I'm adding a waypoint to your map. So, uh, a colleague of yours left for vacation this morning and forgot to send a video file she promised me. 
Since I hate just about everyone else on your floor, I was hoping you could help me. Could you transfer the file from her computer and deliver it to the courier when she comes? It'll be easy. You just wander over to their animus, log in, and transfer the file. Easy. And please be snappy before I find a reason to hate you too. Right, reach your colleague's workstation, which is this way. A locked door? <laughs> Not a problem. That's the advantage of me having level one security clearance. Now, you do too. Don't abuse it. Nice. Log on and I'll walk you through this. We got a uh, cool little drawings. Stick, you know that I will take. Number 12, 28. There's. And now you can log on to these and get some nice juicy shit. Now, you need to bypass the core to find the data inside. Once you reach it, your communicator will download it automatically. You need to find your way around the core to reach the data inside. Wee! You cracked it. Good. The file should be downloading. I set up a database for any data you find. Just look for the My File section in your communicator, and you'll be redirected right away. Everything you download will be found in there. Uh, protected by a firewall, of course. Hey, Dad. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's funny. I, I have this memory of you, uh, when I keep coming back to. And, uh, I, I always think about it when I'm working, or just before going to bed, uh, because it, um, sort of calms me, I guess, um. I was 14, I think, and, uh, and and you were trying to teach me how to, to walk with a light step. Remember that? How to be mindful of how much noise I made when I moved around. Simple stuff. Stuff I understand now, but back then, I uh, gotta tell you, I thought you were just being <laughs> an asshole. Uh, so, uh, you told me you were gonna go up to your room and sit with your back to the door and read a book. You wanted me to wait at least 15 minutes and then sneak up there and tap you on the shoulder without you knowing. I, I even remember the book you were reading at the time, the one by uh, Captain Johnson. And you warned me that if you caught me, we'd have to start all over. Then you went upstairs. And I waited. I waited and I waited and I waited. I waited four hours before deciding to go up. And even then, it took me 20 minutes to get to the foot of the stairs. And uh, another 30 to get up them. And then 10 to get down the hall. And there I was at the door and peeked into your room. And I was, I was so hoping that you'd be asleep. But no. No, you, you were still reading. And I just about shit myself. But 10 minutes later... I was just five feet away from you. And that's when I remember setting my foot down and you flinched. Ever so slightly, you, you flinched. I thought maybe I'd imagined it, but I knew you'd hurt me. You, you didn't say anything. You just checked your watch, you reached for your drink, you took a sip, and then you kept reading. But I knew I'd failed. You didn't say anything. I, I, I didn't understand why. Then I lunged and tapped you on the shoulder. And you turned around and, oh, fantastic, you said. And you scooped me up and you gave me a big hug. And I didn't say anything. But Dad, Dad, I was so pissed off. I wanted to scream at you. I, I failed. And you knew it. But you said nothing. I stayed mad for weeks. I thought you were you, you were patronizing me. But maybe you decided right there that I was never going to be the man you wanted me to be. But I realized just a few years ago that you checking your watch, that was the clue, wasn't it? 
He let me win because I had been so patient. And I guess that impressed you. You know, maybe at that moment you thought it might be better to be my dad instead of my mentor. I, I don't really know. Maybe for you, they're, they're one and the same. You know, either way, I'm happy to know that both my mentor and my dad are looking out for me. I didn't understand that then. I think I do now. Hmm, interesting. Computer's hacked one of 33. Obviously I can do that to the others, I just don't need to do the actual one they want me to do, but while I'm on this floor, I might as well take them all out. And see what juicy gossip they have for me. <laughs> Less of Assassin's Creed now, more watchdogs hacking. Mines and History Commission 2. The perp. Mm, nice. Um, don't know one. Is it just that one left in this room? I believe so, yes. So we shall hack away. Yes! I thought then, I was like, shit! But now it's the right one. December 23rd, 2012. Sample Recovery Unit Team Lead Fisher Case reporting on Subject 17, Desmond Miles. The subject was deceased and unattended. Time of death was placed around 0 hundred hours and 7 minutes, with conditions favorable for DNA sample recovery. We had some initial concerns about interference in the vault, but given the skill and talent of this team, we were able to capture useful data. I personally retrieved the subject's backpack and extracted a number of objects of interest to undergo detailed analysis. The subject displayed burns to the right hand, severe enough to fuse the bones, indicating some kind of spontaneous, intense burn trauma. Honestly, we've never seen anything like it before. Head, neck, and torso remained in good condition. I hand-selected recovery agents to retrieve fluid samples, blood and saliva. We then commenced material extraction and were able to preserve several exemplary samples. Data analysis and sequencing is already underway and I'm told proceeding with exceptional ease thanks to the cloud database and the work of Abstergo Sample Recovery Unit 3. The legacy of Subject 17 will continue uninhibited as Sample 17. Okay. Oh, you're better at this than I'd hoped. Now zip on down to the lobby. Come on. See? That file you acquired? I wouldn't recommend watching it. I mean, who oh, you could, but it's unpleasant. So once you hand it off, just pretend it never happened, okay? Otherwise, you'll just go to bed feeling sad. Anyway, the courier should be waiting downstairs. That's a fucking door. A while. I suppose it goes without saying, just because you now know how to hack all your colleagues' computers, it doesn't mean you should. I mean, not every day, right? <laughs> no, seriously, though, that's illegal, so don't be a dick. Unless that's your nature. But you gave me the power. I must use the power. Oh shit. Didn't mean to click that. Right, let's go drop this off. To the courier who's totally not a character we've already seen in this game before. I followed that recipe to the letter. It's an art shot. Oh, look who's here. So you didn't forget, after all, you're just incredibly rude. And made poor Rebecca here wait for nearly 30 minutes. You limey. Be nice. Sorry about him. He's high on his own supply. 
So, how should we do this? Data transfer? Great, that should do it. We'll email you the receipt. Till next time, take care, Sean. Bye-bye, yes, bye. And don't expect any more free coffee. Arrogance. <laughs> She's great, isn't she? A turn to the animus, got yep. Oh. Hey, I just got word the courier has come and gone. Wonderful, you're a miracle. No, 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 that's an exaggeration. You're not a miracle. You're an employee. Doing a job. But thanks for helping out. Anyway, thanks. Have fun pirating. Number ten. Get in there. Straight into people's homes. Can't access that. Just seeing what I can do while I'm down here. Access free, so I can't do that one yet. Sticky note. Number six. Eight out of twenty, almost halfway there. Nice. Let's head back up. Before I go back in there, I'll just run out a little nose around. But anything more we can hack? Have I done this one yet? No, I have not. I will do this before I fucking get back in. I will also grab that one there. Number 16, which brings me to 9 out of 20. It's a basic frogger. Fuck. Fired that then. Should probably wait on that one. I thought. I think it. If it's a slight eclipse, then it's game over. It's annoying a little bit. Oh, fuck! My finger slipped. <laughs> I actually did it really well, and I was like, oh, nice, and then my fucking finger slipped too much. Okay, uh, it's been a few weeks since the last recording. Sorry about that. Of course, I guess it's just a few seconds for you. A little leap down the playlist. Um, anyway, uh, I was talking about Clay. Uh, Kesmerica, Subject 16. So, when I fell into a coma back in Italy and woke up in the Animus Black Room, it was uh, so calming. It felt like I... Uh, I had woken up into a dream, a haze, a, a dream where none of this mess had ever happened. Uh, felt like I should just be getting ready for another day of pouring drinks at bad weather and uh, another day of complaining about being between girlfriends and wondering what the hell to do with myself. But uh, when I saw Clay, just sitting there, it started to come back piece by piece and when he told me about Lucy I uh <sighs> fuck you know it it hurt you know, you know realizing that I killed her without thinking or feeling anything not at the time anyway well and things just kept piling on there were more memories of Ezio and Altair and first civilization and then right before he vanished Clay passed on his memories 
to me. He showed me everything he had seen and lived through, and it was... It was brief, but overwhelming. I'm not really sure how to explain. He saw glimpses of Adam and Eve and their escape from slavery. He saw the beginning and the end of the war between the first Civ and humans. He saw Minerva, Juno, and Tinia trying to work out their their calculations. At least that's what they called them. They, they had these tools, these powerful uh, machines that could predict possible futures. Not what was going to happen, but what, uh, what, what could happen. Probabilities. And, well, they spent a lot of energy trying to figure out what was the most likely scenario for the future. Theirs and ours. And in the end, I guess they figured I was their most likely candidate. Some guy named Desmond living at the beginning of the 21st century of the Common Era. But which Desmond was the right one? Because, you see, probability is a weird thing. It can branch out in so many ways. Which version of me did they need? Was it the Desmond who got married early and had a son? One who stayed single in New York? Or, or was it the Desmond who moved to San Francisco to be a waiter? Maybe uh, it was the Desmond who worked at an auto body shop in Chicago, or maybe it was the me who never ran away from his parents in the first place. First Civ had countless variations to choose from, but in the end, the uh, lucky one was me. I'm the Desmond their best calculations spit out. I'm the Desmond they left their messages for, and I guess I have to live with that honor. I think that's a pretty cool way of keeping uh, no the North and the character Desmond obviously in the franchise, they're having little memos in this game. There's the last one, we'll head back into a fucking bitch. We'll head back into the Animus. Oh, that's close. Come on! Oh shit, that's gonna fuck me. No, it didn't. Nice. I have now resumed the practice of dressing as a man. And have put off my woman's dress. Why did you take it? Who made you take it? I took it of my own free will. With no constraint. I prefer a man's dress to a woman's. You made an oath, Jeanne. You swore to never again dress as a man. I never meant to swear that I would not resume the practice. Why have you done so? Because it is more lawful and suitable for me to return to the practice of wearing a man's dress. Being always among men, than to have a woman's dress. I have resumed it because her promise made to me has not been. How is he? Our three doing well. Are we still in 18th century Hungary? No. His connection is so stable, he's jumped between a few ancestors today. We're in 15th century France now. Turns out he's related to one of Joan of Arc's executioners. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, Eileen. Yesterday, Vidic asked me to help him work out some of the bugs in his audiovisual renderer, and I told him... No, no, no. Come on, Satish, not you. It wouldn't be permanent. A, a few months at most. Months? That will kill every ounce of momentum we have. It won't, I promise. Honestly, I think this could help us. If I can get a look at what these people are doing, we could... Come on. He's trying to pull you over to his side. Don't you see that? He's luring you with quick victory and prestige. That's not what this is about, honestly. I need to get back to work. Eileen, I'm sorry. Do what you must. I'll survive.
Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32, April 2nd, 1981. Host Eileen Bock. DNA sample SV1970. <laughs> Miriam, are you awake? But Miriam, they're coming for me. Who oh, is it? The guards? I see them from my window, amassing in the courtyard. My time is up. But don't say this. You don't know that. Forgive me for this, Miriam. But I must tell you something. The artifact. We have it. But only Oscar and I know its location. Don't tell me. They will release you. Your family has connections. You must take the artifact and bring it to the assassins in Paris. Please don't. I don't want to know. It's safer if I don't. Hush now. If I die, knowledge of its location dies with me. You must bring it to the assassins. Assassins? I don't understand. It's a spy of St. Petrus. No, I don't want to hear. Sound seven. I have no idea what the fuck's going on right now. Hello? Eileen, hi. It's Carl. Carl, I know it's you. Sorry, you just sound exhausted. Did I wake you? No, no, I'm... I've just been busy. It sounds like it. I'm just a little tired, that's all. No, I mean, your... your project sounds fascinating. Your colleague, Dr. Warren Vidic, he called me recently and he told me what you've been up to. He what? Warren? Yeah, he told us about your research. Memories, ancestry, all of that. He even asked if we'd be willing to come in and... No! Jesus, no! What the hell is he doing? Eileen, it's okay. We signed some papers, non-disclosure stuff. No! He's trying to fuck me over. Damn it! Eileen, we just talked about my mother. Just like you and I did. World War II. That's all. It's the artifact. The what? Carl? If he calls you again, you tell him you work through me, okay? That's it. Vidic has been a pain in my ass for years. And I don't need him getting all the glory for my two years of hard work. All right. Uh, so how should I go about this? I mean, the wheels are in motion. I... I don't know. Just go through me if he contacts you again. Please? All right. You'll do that? Of course. Yes. Thank you, Carl. I'm sorry I was short with you. I've just been exhausted. That's all. It's all right, hon. Just, just take care of yourself. How much more is there? Morning, Eileen. We're almost ready. Just a few more adjustments. Hmm. Okay. I had the team do some research on this artifact we've been chasing, and it appears the Third Reich actually found something matching its description sometime in 1940. Uh, Eileen, are you all right? Sorry. Yeah, I'm fine. Just a little scattered. Biddick called my ex-husband last night. He wants to put him in the Animus. To find the artifact before us? Exactly. Well, it would be faster using Biddick's Animus. And maybe that would get us back to our original work. Satish, if we let that happen, then all our money dries up. Lillian is paying for us to find the artifact, not improve our methods. Do you understand? Right, of course. I'm sorry. Let's just, let's just burn those bridges when we cross them. Are we ready? Yes, just a few more adjustments, Senorian. I made a small change to the genetic input modulator. I'm hoping that buys us a few more minutes. Even a few seconds would be nice. I'm ready. All right. Settle in. That it? And that's it. So then what the fuck was going on there? Uh, that's this room cleared. Well, uh, just <laughs> we'll head back to the animus. That's kind of boggled me. Right, animus, animus, animus. All right, yeah, animus. There you are. Oh, there's some new. St oh, wrong button. Let's click that. Some new statues. Right, let's, let's head back in because. This has been a very uh, different type of Assassin's Creed episode. This has been more hacking than actual Assassin's work. So, uh, yeah, let's do this. If you like what you've seen, don't be afraid to uh, throw us a little like and uh, subscribe. That's always very appreciated over here. And, uh, well, I'll see you on the next video.